Hello everyone, my name is Audrey Hines. We're having just a couple technical difficulties, so bear with us just as we're getting started here. We do apologize for the slight delay. Um, we, as we get started here, uh, you won't be able to see us for a little bit, but hopefully we will be making an appearance uh, at the end for our Q&A session. Um, but otherwise, you're going to be able to see our slides um, going through and we'll be leafing through that. Before we dig in and give out too much of our glorious information, we just want to double check and make sure that everybody can hear us. So if some persons can just type into the comment chat that just says that they're able to hear us as we're streaming, we want to make sure I'm not just talking to nobody. We're just waiting to see if I'm getting any feedback. Perfect, great, thank you to those who gave us the thumbs up that we're good to go. Again, my name is Audrey Hines. I'm the Associate Director of Residential Living and Student Conduct here at Drexel University. Um, I'm joined by some of my colleagues from our University Housing Office and our American Campus Communities um, colleagues from our second year housing um, facilities that we have here at Drexel University and our affiliated housing. So I'm going to go around and have everybody else introduce themselves um, and then we'll get started with our presentation. Sasha, would you like to begin? Sure. My name is Sasha Gamberg. I'm the Interim Director for University Housing. Happy to join this evening. Hi, my name is Tyler Grohl. I work in Student Life, and I'll be help moderating the Q&A session after the uh, presentation. I'm Matthew Mecklin, Area Manager for American Campus Communities. And I'm Stacey Erling. I'm the Assistant General Manager at the Summit, also here on behalf of American Campus. Wonderful. So um, that is our whole team. Um, as I said, if you have any questions um, throughout this session, feel free to type them into the comment box just where you gave us that heads up about being able to hear us, which is again really great. Um, and we're going to sort of dive into our presentation here today. Um, we are going. This is our agenda for the evening. This is sort of what we're going to be able to be covering. We're, what we're going to be covering this evening. Uh, we're going to start with a brief overview of university housing and the second year requirement for our students living with us um, for this second half of their two-year residency requirement. Um, we'll go into a brief explanation of residential living and what I represent at the table, and then we'll have our colleagues from our American Campus Communities properties discuss what amenities and what properties they offer for our students during this time. Okay, so on the screen you'll see uh, a range of Drexel housing options that are available, and this is on our website for you to review at your convenience. Um, so I'm not going to get into the specifics here, uh, but it is on our website, drexel.edu slash housing slash sophomores. Um, and when you get onto the website, you can go ahead and compare and so you can see all of your different housing options um, on the website. Okay. So just an overview, our housing application for university housing will open on Friday, January 18th. Um, some of the reasons uh, to live with university housing is we do not have any cancellation fees for co-op and study abroad. We have very flexible lease agreements. Um, your housing fee will cover your utilities, your cable, and your laundry, and you are going to be paying your housing through your Drexel e-bill. So I want to talk a little bit about the two-year residency program, which you're probably familiar with as well. Um, so our first-year students, um, your, your students right now, um, are part of the first-year live-on requirement. And in their second year, they're also required to live on through the options that we uh, mentioned before and we'll cover as well. And part of the reason that we have these requirements is we really want to focus on student development. We want to make sure our students are living in secure housing and they're still really engaged with the campus community. And we feel that the two-year residency program achieves all of those objectives. Okay, so let's talk about where your students can live. So if they're living in university housing, they'll have the option of Canaris Hall or Stiles Hall, and that's operated by Drexel University Housing. If they're living with American campus communities, their options will be Chestnut Square, The Summit, or University Crossings. If they're a member of a Drexel fraternity or sorority house, they can live in the Drexel and fraternity sorority house with an invitation from their organization, 
Or if you live within 10 miles from campus and you'd like to commute from home in your second year, you just need to let us know and you could do that in your second year provided that you're within that 10 mile radius. Okay, so let's get into the specifics about Canaris Hall. Canaris Hall is one of our suite style buildings on our main campus. It has four and six person suites with two people living to each bedroom. It's a wonderful building. There's a community lounge. Um, there's a study lounge. You, there's laundry uh, on the facility, which is free. Um, and it's right close to campus. It's across the street from many of students' um, classes. And if you're familiar with Race Hall, it's very similar to design of Race and North Hall if your students are living there right now. Can I talk about styles, Yes, Sasha? you can talk about styles, Audrey. All right, so again, this is Audrey Hines. Um, I am the Associate Director of Residential Living and Student Conduct. Fun fact, I also oversee and run Styles Alumni Hall for Drexel as well. Um, styles is our upperclassmen and graduate community. It's located down in Center City at the corners of 15th and Vine. Uh, we have one, two, and three bedroom apartment configurations with private bedrooms within each apartment. So inside a suite, so if you have an apartment of a three bedroom apartment, you would have three students living in that apartment, one student per bedroom. We call them apartments rather than suites because they actually have a full kitchen in each of the suites. So there's a, a fully operational stove, a full size fridge um, that's shared with all of the members of the suite. So a student has a private bedroom and then a shared um, uh, living space, bathroom space, and kitchen space uh, within each apartment. On each apartment, there is free laundry facilities, on, or within each on each floor, there's free laundry facilities at the end of each hall that's shared by just that floor. And we also have a common room and a classroom there, so there is even the opportunity that a student's class could be offered in the space within that hall. This hall is conveniently located for our students who are taking classes within the College of Medicine, um, but all and for our Graduate School of Biomedical Sciences and Professional Studies, say that five times fast, um, but also for our students, particularly our second year students in the College of Nursing and Health Professions programs. I have several students living in the building currently who really enjoy this space, um, especially its location um, to their classes down on the Center City campus. It is also conveniently located to Center City, Philadelphia, uh, just blocks away from City Hall, which currently is hosting our Christmas Village and ice skating rink at Dilworth Park. And then it also has a shuttle that runs to the University City campus um, from about 5.30 a.m. to 11 p.m. Monday through Friday. Unfortunately, the shuttle doesn't run on the weekends, but there are other methods of transportation. It's just steps away and blocks away from the SEPTA stations and the public transit. Did I call up a cover everything? I think you definitely covered Nailed it. Nailed it. Okay, great. You so win. Excited. You win. So again, uh, our application opens on January 18th. And, and we've kind of listed our highlights for the four reasons you should consider living with university housing. Um, and it, um, yep. And if you want more information, including virtual room tours, deadlines, step-by-step -step instructions, please visit our website. We're gonna um, have videos orienting your students to how to apply uh, for their second year, how to pay a deposit, um, et cetera, including the virtual room tours, which we find very helpful for students when they're trying to make the decision as to where to live on campus. So I'm gonna turn it over um, to Audrey again uh, to talk about residential living. One of the other added benefits of living in Drexel's, uh, Drexel owned uh, housing uh, and uh, with university housing and with residential living is that we do have live on staff within each of Canaris and Stiles Hall. This staff consists of at least one professional staff member and a staff of peer, uh, well, and students, uh, student staff RAs. Um, in my hall in Stiles, we do also have graduate RAs, so there is a really neat added element of some mentorship academically that I have students who are medical students who are RAs, and then therefore they're made to go uh, develop community within the hall. And so you still have that added component of when we talked about the student development. We have intentional programming through our residential curriculum that our students, are, our RAs, are, for are forced to do, but they are required as a component of their job mandated um, <laughs> and what they do in that in those requirements is go through and meet a series of learning requirements that we believe add value to and complement your Drexel students 
grad or education, academic education with Drexel. Um, and so during this time, we will have uh, programs within the hall that are learning focused, stress reducing. Sometimes it's just offering some free food because cooking is hard sometimes. Um, we also give um, some cultural excursions into different uh, com communities within um, Philadelphia. We'll do some service opportunities. Um, it's also a great opportunity for crisis response and safety that we have our staff who are on an on-call rotation 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, so again, adding to that safe uh, housing opportunity as well. Um, and again, the location of our uh, facilities grants uh, that you'll have students who are within, we try to pair um, for, again, specifically styles, we try to pair some of our staff who would be sharing the same academic majors as our students who would be residing with us. So I have several staff members who are in the College of Nursing and Health Professions. And again, there's some of that built, built in um, mentorship academically, but also just some, some collegiality and getting to know people who are studying areas that are sim of similar interest to them. So that is a little bit about residential living. So if students have questions about billing and how they can afford housing, et cetera, we strongly recommend that they visit Drexel Central. Um, that is their one-stop shop for anything to do with financial aid and registration. And they should um, also contact them regarding their Drexel e-bill or financial aid. I think that will solve a lot of the questions about affordability and where students can afford to live, especially if they have a unique scholarship situation or financial um, situation. Uh, university housing and American campus communities doesn't have the specifics of your student's uh, account, and Drexel Central can definitely um, aid you in figuring out what is affordable and um, what is not based on your bill. So next we're going to hear from our colleagues in our American Campus Community Properties. And so I'm going to let them take it away in discussing what amenities their properties have to offer for your student. Awesome. So um, again, I'm Matthew Meckel. I'm the Area Manager uh, for American Campus Communities here at Drexel University. Um, I office out of the Summit at University City, but I also assist in overseeing operations at Chestnut Square and University Crossings as well. So uh, kind of diving right into our slides here. Um, going on to our history here, um, you know, we, we really exemplify and we uh, put students first. So uh, a couple of bullet points here just to kind of go over our history and our overview with Drexel. Um, so we, we, we know students were co-founded uh, co by former West Virginia University uh, resident assistant Bill Bayless um, in 1993. So he was a former RA on campus. Um, from, uh, uh, you know, a, again with putting, uh, you know, I'm sorry, with uh, students, you know, loving us and everything, uh, ACC, we're proud to, uh, to have over 133,000 students uh, living with our communities across the nation. Um, so we have a lot of students that, uh, that call us home kind of across the board there. Um, ACC, so we became a publicly uh, traded company in 2000, um, sorry, 2004. Um, and then from there, with our relationship with Drexel University, uh, we began in 2008 uh, when we acquired University Crossings. Uh, from there, our relationship has since grown uh, with the construction of Chestnut Square and the Summit at University City. Um, Chestnut opened in 2013, and then the Summit opened in 2015, so two uh, relatively new buildings here to uh, Drexel University. Um, in total, we have over 3,000 uh, students, Drexel students, that do call um, American Campus home. Uh, moving into our mission, so across our entire range of properties and price points, uh, consistently provide every resident um, with an environment conducive to healthy living, uh, personal growth, academic achievement, and professional success. Um, diving into our core values, um, I'll go ahead and read them off here. So number one, of course, I mentioned uh, putting students first. Uh, we have be passionate, uh, surprise and delight, uh, do, do the right thing, pursue growth, create team spirit, uh, reward achievement, drive evolution, optimize, and give back. Um, and then the same thing too with, uh, with our communities. We have community assistants that uh, live on site, also work in our offices. Um, so we do different resident programming and everything. And what we do is we try to ex exemplify those values um, in those events uh, so the students can experience them firsthand. Uh, kind of diving into our application process and our leasing process, um, I do want to point out a couple things because uh, things have changed since uh, last year going into this year. Um, to start, our rising sophomore priority period is going to start January 18th and it goes through February 3rd. Um, you can actually apply at any time, so uh, a little bit different than on campus, their application period starts on the 18th. Um, with American Campus, you can uh, apply at any time, you know, from today, uh, kind of leading into that time frame. 
uh, just so that we have the information, everything on file, and we can, uh, you know, once that leasing process starts, we have all the information we need. Um, this year, the leasing process will be entirely electronic. Uh, so your student uh, can sign from home, can sign from their phone, um, kind of whatever is going to be the most convenient. Our offices will, of course, be open to answer any questions. Um, you know, if someone wanted to come in the office, absolutely. But, uh, you know, we really encourage them to, to have that electronic lease agreement that they can sign uh, remotely. Um, also new this year, all of our floor plans are going to be co-op eligible uh, and study abroad friendly. So uh, for, for rising sophomores. So it doesn't matter which floor plan your student decides to live in and, and signs. Uh, signs for, they'll have a co-op friendly lease agreement, uh, study abroad lease agreement that uh, accompanies them in that floor plan. Uh, moving into where we are on campus, so it has a map just with a basic overview of our different locations um, kind of throughout the uh, university here. Um, university crossings, I mean I'm sure you've probably seen photos of it, it's got the big Drexel sign on top. Um, the summit um, of course is the uh, building that just opened in 2015. Um, you know a lot of students recognize it as the uh, building that has Chipotle. And then uh, you have Chestnut Square off of uh, Chestnut Street, which uh, of course has the Shake Shack location there, so a lot of students uh, recognize it as that as well. Um, at this point, I'm gonna kick it over to Stacy, and she's gonna go over some property-specific information uh, with the three communities. Hello again, uh, like I mentioned, I'm Stacy Erling. I'm the Assistant General Manager at the Summit at University City, um, and I'm going to talk to you about the three properties that we have here at Drexel University. Um, so starting with the Summit at University City, we offer one, two, three and four bedroom apartments and suites with shared um, and private bedrooms. All of our units are fully furnished with leather style furniture and we also do have washers and dryers included in every unit. We have a 24 hour state of the art fitness center um, with equipment, cardio machines, as well as free weights. And then um, we do offer group and private study lounges um, in the building. We also have a 25th floor Sky Lounge um, with a full kitchen that offers 270 degree views of Philadelphia, uh, Center City, Philadelphia. And we also offer um, on-site dining and retail, including, like Matt mentioned, Chipotle, Starbucks, as well as Drexel's um, Urban Eatery, which um, is one of the on-campus dining hall locations uh, that your student probably frequents every day. Um, like Matt also mentioned, um, we do have co-op and study abroad revisions available in all of our floor plans um, for the second year students. Moving on to Chestnut Square, we have two, three, and four bedroom apartments and townhomes. Um, the townhomes are a unique bi-level floor plan. Um, they offer, um, uh, you know, three floor, or I'm sorry, two floors in that floor plan, and uh, those are the ones in the West Bar location. Um, they are also fully furnished with leather style um, furniture as well as a sectional sofa and then um, they do have fully equipped quick kitchens with granite countertops and stainless steel appliances. Um, at Chestnut Square they also have a 24-hour academic success lounge as well as recreation center with billiards um, and a golf simulator. Chestnut Square also offers on-site dining. Um, the, uh, the Han Dining Center is located right in the heart of Chestnut Square um, in the Cree Student Center. And then they also have um, additional retail, including Shake Shack, Joe's Coffee, and Kazara. Um, like we also previously mentioned, all the floor plans at Chestnut Square are going to be co-op and study abroad um, revisions uh, available. Moving on to University Crossings, um, there's the one with the big uh, Drexel University sign on the top. Uh, they do have two and three bedroom apartments. Uh, with private and shared bedrooms. They also offer um, a leather style sofa um, with their living room, as well as stainless steel appliances and hardwood style flooring. Um, there's also academic success center um, in university crossings with free printing and group study lounges on alternating floors. They do have a 24 hour state of the art fitness center with strength equipment, um, cardio machines and free weights. And um, to close out university crossings, they do also offer co-op and study revisions in all of their floor plans to um, second year students. You can I jump in real quick? Sure. Hey, this is Tyler. Um, I see a lot of questions are starting to come in and I just want to iterate that um, we will be addressing those once we uh, get through the whole presentation. A lot of these questions may be answered uh, by the time we, we do finish all the slides. So we're nearing the end um, and then we'll be able to, to jump into any questions that haven't been answered as well as ones that have already been posed um, from the chat, so keep keep those questions coming. Awesome, thank you. Um, so I just want to touch on a few of the benefits of uh, signing your lease early with American Campus. So um, 
by signing early when the rising sophomore uh, priority period first opens up, you'll be able to get the floor plan that you want. Um, our most pop popular floor plans are the ones that sell out um, the first. So, you know, getting that application in early um, will, you know, help you secure the floor plan that you do want. Um, also, the location that you want, there's uh, many lo uh, floors within each building. Most of them are pretty tall high rises as well as, you know, securing the right property that you'd like um, because we do offer three properties um, on Drexel's campus. And lastly, the roommates that you want. Um, so being able to sign your lease early, you have, um, you know, you're able to put your roommate requests in earlier and allow us to uh, help accommodate those for you by securing your space early. Also, if you go ahead and apply, um, you know, prior to our, um, when our period opens up on January 18th, you'll be getting communication from us, um, you know, throughout December and early January about what to expect. And then that way you, you'll be more prepared once the um, priority period opens up on January 18th. Okay. So we're getting back to kind of our options that are on our website um, that you can review at your convenience. We strongly urge you to review all of the options before you make any commitment to either American campus communities or university housing or Greek housing because it's a big decision of where you're going to live next year. And so definitely do the research. We've created these graphs that we think will be helpful. Um, if you go on our website, Again, you can review this at your leisure. I recommend spending the time over winter break reviewing all of these options with your student to determine what is the best fit for the two of you um, and potential roommates. Okay, so we're about to get into our Q&A period and you will see our lovely faces. Um, we do have all your questions. Um, we will have our lovely faces in a moment. Um, not at all. Okay. You will not get to see my beautiful power jacket that I wore this evening just for you, but you, we will be able to answer questions for you. So we're going to start. Um, our camera is unfortunately not connecting to our uh, media, so it will just be our voices. So uh, feel free to continue to type in questions in that comment bar, um, and we will try to answer it by the best person around the table um, who can give you the best answer to your questions. All right, so uh, let's dive into this. So one of the first questions is probably for our, um, our housing aff affiliate um, colleagues here. Does anyone other than Drexel students live in ACC properties? So we do lease to uh, anyone that applies and chooses to live with us, of course, with fair housing. However, given our location on campus, as well as our lease terms, we certainly attract mostly Drexel students. Um, I don't have the exact demographic off the top of my head, but I mean, I would say we're 99% Drexel students across the board. Uh, we do have some UPenn students that may live at Chestnut that uh, have been here for a couple years and if they've renewed into their uh, current space, uh, but we are certainly primarily Drexel students. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, what if co-op starts at the beginning of sophomore year? Does a lease start later or does it start at the beginning of co-op? So with university housing, um, it will start based on the quarter cycle. Um, so it depends on when fall starts. and. Co-ops typically start exactly when the co uh, when the quarter system starts, but it's not always cleanly done that way. Some students opt to start later or earlier. We don't recommend that because we've created our leasing and our housing arrangements based on the quarter cycle. Um, so co-ops should start at the same time um, the term starts. And then uh, similar with American Campus, um, if their co-op starts in the fall semester, um, you know, we just need the verification and the paperwork so that we can process the revision uh, to the lease for when the student comes back either in January or in the springtime. Um, there is uh, in the Exhibit C, which is the co-op revision um, agreement, it does kind of go over the different uh, stipulations to that and of course the uh, timeline to return the information to us. So essentially as soon as your student finds out that their co-op or study abroad um, is going to be out of the Drexel area, out of the Philly area. Um, they have a seven day period to get the information over to us so that we can process the revision and then uh, have their new paperwork sent out for their new lease term. And I think it's important to mention that having a co-op um, itself will not release a student from their lease arrangement with ACC or with university housing. That co-op needs to be outside of the 10 mile radius 
from campus. So if they have a co-op in Center City, um, they'll still be, and they sign the lease, um, they'll still be responsible for that lease. But we definitely want to encourage folks who have co-ops uh, further away in New York, California, et cetera. We don't want to penalize them for an amazing opportunity elsewhere. I think uh, some, some parents or students may be um, familiar with the roommate matching process as a first year student, but what does that look like for ACC properties for, for sophomores? Sure. So um, when a student goes ahead and uh, signs a lease with us, they would be filling out a resident profile where they would fill out their um, interests, uh, study habits, hobbies, uh, similar things like that. And then we take all the resident profiles that we have received and we hand match people based on the responses that they put on their resident profile. So it's very important to fill that out um, very detailed and make sure that you get that back to us because that's what we use in order to match you with the roommate. If you have um, roommate requests, that's where you would also put them on the resident profile. And then as long as the requests between you and whoever you're requesting are mutual, then we would place you um, in the same unit together. Um, can someone speak to what the price difference between uh, Canaris styles and ACC properties might be? What those options would look like and where they would find that information? Absolutely. If you go on the Drexel University housing <clears throat> page and you click on 2019 second year students, um, you can see information about the graph that we talked about earlier and then um, about the different properties by viewing the side-by-side -side comparison on the right-hand side. Um, we do um, break it down based on the specific differences in each building, but in terms of the price points, it's going to fluctuate based on the residence hall or, uh, or American campus community. We have a PDF that uh, folks can download on that page um, that gives you some idea, but it's going to fluctuate based on the type of lease they have um, in each property ACC, so it's, it's difficult to quantify generally. But the university housing rates are on our website, and I'll let ACC talk about their housing rates and where they're available. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we do have a wide variety of different floor plans and different options, whether it be a, a suite-style apartment, a shared floor plan, a private bedroom with private bath. Uh, so just, you know, there's a lot of different options there that are going to be at different price points. Um, some you'll find will come in a little bit under maybe university housing. Some are going to be um, pretty much in line or some may be a little bit more just depending on if it's a private option or kind of what that apartment is. So um, same thing like university housing. If you go to our different websites, um, our splitter page is phillystudentliving.com and then we have our separate websites from there. Um, all floor plans and rates and everything are online. And then I also encourage to, uh, you know, either you or your student um, or both, you know, uh, come to our offices, you know, visit, tour, so we can kind of show you around and, and give you that information um, kind of in person and go over the different options because like Sasha mentioned earlier, you know, there are a lot of different options out there. We want to make sure that you're making the, uh, you know, the most educated decision as possible. But for general information, just to get a starting point and an idea, if you go to drexel.edu slash housing, you go to sophomores and then select side by side overview, it'll give you a lot of the answers. Um, that you're asking for right now, including a PDF that has some good general information of starting price points. Um, can someone talk about, sorry, just lost, there's a lot of questions coming in. Um, <laughs> is there a fee to secure a location with um, ACC? Yeah, so uh, we have our application fees, our upfront fees, which would be a $199 application fee and then a $150 um, administrative fee. So that, those would be paid at the time of the application comes in. Um, and then from there, once you sign the lease and everything, nothing would be due until your first installment comes due in September. Um, are, are any of our residence halls uh, co-ed? So all of the residence halls are co-ed, and I think so are ACC. I think you might be asking about gender-inclusive housing. I might be wrong there. So when, when folks say co-ed, that means that there's males and females living together on the same floor, and that is true of all of our properties. If you're asking if students of with different gender identities living together in, in each suite or apartment style, we do have that option for university housing. They will just select that on their housing application and ACC very similarly as well. 
yep, we actually uh, just rolled that out this year for gender inclusive housing. So same process, you'll uh, mark it on your application, the resident profile sheet, and then uh, the, the same process would entail just like on campus. And with both of those processes, you do have to opt in. So we would not put you in a suite or apartment with someone with a different gender identity unless you've opted into selecting that option. If, um, I will say while Tyler's looking for the next question, if you have very specific questions about your personal situation, uh, maybe financial or uh, an, uh, maybe communication you had with our office or ACC, that might be a good thing to take offline and email us directly so we can definitely support you with the specifics that we might not be able to talk about um, in this webinar. Um, in, it says, in Canaris, are there kitchens on the floors like there are in race? And as second year students, are they required to have meal plans like they are as first year students? Only first year students are required to have meal plans. I personally think it's good to have an, um, an optional meal plan for the times you don't feel like cooking. Um, there is a kitchenette in each room, but there's not a, a cooking device in each um, suite. So they can't, they won't have a stove um, in Canaris there, Hall. There are common kitchens on the floor, just like the first year halls though. So they'll have a kitchenette within their suite. They'll have a kitchen on the floor, mm -hmm. whereas Styles has a kitchen in each apartment. So if your student loves to cook, um, I would definitely have him consider Styles Hall because it's a wonderful way to continue to do that. There seems to be a lot of questions around the co-op. And so um, I, I think if someone can address what, what whether a co-op is local or, or outside of 10 mile radius, um, if they're living outside of 10 mile radius, we can explain if their place would be empty while they're on co-op and left vacant, do they take that, is that room get placed with somebody else? or do they live in that room while they're on co-op and not in classes? Can, can someone clarify that a little bit for us? Sure, that's a great question. So when students uh, sign a lease with the university housing or with ACC, and then they have a co-op opportunity, they're still welcome to continue to live in university housing or ACC. It is not a requirement to cancel their housing based on the fact that they have a co-op. If their co-op, however, is far away and they're not able to live in university housing or ACC or their fraternity or sorority house, and that means over 10 miles from campus, they can ask to be released from their lease or their housing arrangement. While they are gone um, with university housing, we will assign that space to someone else. Um, if the roommates in that room have someone specific they'd like to pull in, they can definitely give us that feedback. Uh, but that does not remain vacant while they are away, and they are not guaranteed to return to that space when they return from their co-op in terms of university housing. We will do our best if it's possible. A lot of students make arrangements where, for example, I know I'm doing my co-op for fall and winter, and Audrey um, is coming and to do her co-op for spring and summer. We might trade spaces, and we might have that arrangement from the very beginning, um, but that's not something we require our students to do. And then uh, same exact thing for American Campus. Um, you know, the, uh, the space would not sit vacant um, if the student revised for co-op or study abroad. Um, and then the same thing, you know, they may come back to a different space. But uh, similar process, just like Sasha just mentioned, if they have someone um, that they want to take over their space, uh, so that way it's there waiting for them when they come back. Or, you know, it could be another friend of their roommates, you know, whatever the case might be, we have a, a relet process. Um, in which case that would uh, be where the student would relet their space to that person and then they would relet it back when the other student is, is coming back from their co-op or study abroad. Sasha, can you clarify what, what the lease periods mean for the three, six, nine, and uh, 12 month? Absolutely. So that's a great question. So we think of housing, university housing based on the quarter system. So when we say three, six, nine, twelve, we mean the uh, the four different quarters. So students can opt to sign up just for fall quarter, just for winter, just for spring, just for summer. Um, understanding that there's a two-year live-on requirement, so we'll need to know where they're living um, those other quarters. Um, but they can sign up for two if they know for sure they're going on a co-op that's far away for spring and summer. They can sign up for fall and winter because um, they know they're doing co-op for spring and summer. So that's what we mean about the flexible lease arrangements for 3, 6, 9, and 12. 
student can sign up for all four terms or can sign up just for three or just for two or just for one. So I know during uh, Family Weekend there had been some um, tour, tours of some of the rooms um, and the ACC properties. So can you talk a little bit about um, how they could possibly see these rooms? Um, if you do still do tours of showrooms um, as well as university housing, what are the options to be able to um, actually get eyes on a space um, for each of these buildings and these layouts? Yeah, absolutely. So um, all of our offices, each uh, community has its own leasing office. So Chestnut Square, University Crossings, and the Summit. Um, all the leasing offices are in the lobby of the main entrance to the building. And uh, we're actually open seven days a week. Um, uh, Monday through Friday, our offices are open 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then Sunday, uh, 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. Um, you're welcome to make an appointment in advance. Uh, you can come with your student, you know, by yourself. They can come visit us. Um, you know, whatever the case might be there, or you can also walk in as well. So maybe you're not planning on being in the area, you just want to stop in because uh, you happen to be here and take a tour. Uh, our model is open during the same time frame. Uh, we'll show you the amenities, the model, go over the different pricing options, different floor plans, and kind of explain any differences between the uh, three communities. University housing, we don't have showrooms available. We are actually fully occupied um, at all times, but we do have the virtual tours online that students can absolutely go online and view and have a really good perspective on both the Canaris and Styles properties. Um, can you talk about the, the, uh, I think the sophomore uh, priority preference window in that period? Is there preference? What is the preference? What kind of preference do they get by applying now versus closer to uh, January 2018? So it's a really good question. There's no preference based on the application date. Um, so you know, if you apply today or if you apply January 14th, um, you're going to be in the same pool of applicants. Uh, by applying early, though, it allows us, gives us the opportunity to get your paperwork in line. Uh, we can make sure that you get that resident profile filled out, the uh, application process, and everything is met on, on that end. So once we get to the leasing process and we start sending electronic leases, um, you know, we have all of that stuff squared away, so it's just the lease document at that point to lock in the space. Um, how the leasing process is going to work, though, while we're on the subject, um, so it does start the 18th. Uh, it will start based on floor plan availability and, you know, floor plans that have limited spaces that we may have a lot of applications in. Uh, how it will work is uh, an email will go out 24 hours in advance, um, letting the student know that the lease is coming the next day. Um, and then they'll have a time frame to get that lease agreement back to us. Um, so just because we start our leasing process on the 18th, if your student has applied for a floor plan that maybe we're not signing on that day, they may not get it until the next day or the day after. So uh, that's kind of how that timeline is going to work this year. So, um, you know, a little bit different than last year, where it was all, you know, kind of that first day, one day, we're going to spread it out just to make it a little bit easier for everyone um, in that timeline. Okay. Um, Is there a self-selection period um, for Styles or for Canaris um, like there was for freshman housing? Yes, <laughs> is the short answer. Um, I don't have the dates for those for that period, but we do allow our rising sophomores and upper class students to participate in self-selection where they can pick their actual uh, spaces online through the housing application similar to your first year student. Okay. Um, is there a storage available where students can store belongings while they are away on co-op? That's a great question. We've recently um, entered into agreement with a vendor called schoolstorage.com. If you visit our website, drexel.edu housing, and you go to housing services and maintenance on the left-hand side, at the very bottom under additional services, we have a link to their website. They're definitely a good resource for students who are maybe moving far away for a co-op and don't want to take all their belongings home. There's not storage in the actual university uh, buildings, and I don't believe ACC has storage either. So this is definitely a great option for our students. Um, we're very excited to secure them for this year because we, we have that request quite a bit and we don't have security on the, um, sorry, we don't have storage on the premises. So definitely um, check out our additional services. They might be a good fit for you as well. Okay. Um, so this is, there's been a few mentions of a, a deadline this Friday for ACC properties. 
You know what all of that is? A deadline for this Friday? Yep. No? Okay. All right. Um, for those of you who are asked questions about a deadline for paperwork due this Friday for uh, University Crossing or, or any of the ACC properties, please contact those buildings directly um, and they'll be able to follow up with those individual um, choices. Um, can, we, can we review security um, in the buildings, uh, just for all the buildings, what that looks like again? Um, cause there's two mentions of that as well. Sure, so I'll discuss in um, our residence halls. In Canaris Hall, there, is, there are two full-time professional staff called our residential desk coordinators um, that work uh, the majority of the day. So they'll work from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. splitting a shift, splitting the shift. Um, and then uh, overnight, we have uh, Drexel Public Safety sitting at the desk. Um, everybody has to scan their IDs to get into the building and they have to register any guests that come into the building with our uh, visitor registration system. Styles is a little bit different. Uh, we are in Center City. We want to make sure that we're cognizant of that. So we do have 24 hour public safety coverage at the desk. Um, same uh, procedure though that the student has to scan in using their ID and then you, they need to sign in all guests at the front desk um, the same way that we would sign them in on the University City campus. And uh, very similar for American Campus, uh, we actually have a company that we use uh, for our courtesy officers that sit at the front desk 24-7, uh, so we always have a courtesy officer uh, manned at the front desk. Of course, depending on the shift and the time frame, there may be multiple. We have rovers that go through the building. Um, along with that, too, we have our community assistant staff that similar like a resident assistant staff, um, and they're on call in the building as well. So if there was anything, you know, they can respond to that. Uh, we have a manager on call system as well as uh, maintenance on call too for any facilities issues after hours. Um, along with the, um, do, 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 lost my train of thought there. Oh, same thing for guests. So uh, your student will come in with their key fob, they'll scan in the front desk. If they have a, a guest that they're signing in, uh, they'll, the sign in process will take place there with the courtesy officer. Um, are these properties only for sophomores or can upperclassmen live there as well? Um, so with university housing, uh, upperclassmen can live there as well. And then same for American campus. So we have uh, upperclassmen and uh, sophomores as well. And I'll also mention in Styles Hall, we do have uh, some floors allocated specifically for our graduate students um, as well. Great. What happens if a suite or apartment that a student chooses first becomes unavailable? Either. Uh, so for American Campus, um, the application process, you'll apply for a floor plan. If for some reason that floor plan sells out or is not available um, at the time that uh, the student is uh, going to sign their lease agreement, then uh, there's a second choice and third choice that they'll put on the application. Um, again, this kind of goes back to really gathering the information and visiting the properties. Um, our staff is very well trained and will be completely transparent if your student has you know, three other roommates they want to live with and they're interested in a floor plan that we only have, you know, three spaces in, uh, we're going to be transparent. We're going to say, hey, you know, this probably isn't going to work to meet your roommate request. Um, would you be interested in this option that could be similar to that? With university housing, because students participate in self-selection, typically students are able to get the space that they want. I think the only time that a space is not available is our one bedroom um, styles apartments are in high demand. We have very, very few of them. And so we're very transparent about that on our housing application that the one bedrooms are typically utilized for students who, who need them for an accommodation or medical reason. Um, and sometimes we do have a, a wait list and students are able to get that one bedroom, but that's probably the only type of room that students um, have a hard time securing. Students living, wanting to live in Canaris would likely be able to secure Canaris. Students living in Styles, same thing. And we, and we do have uh, the four, to, four and six person suites in Canaris. So if you have three roommates, you might want the four person suite. If you have five, you might want the six person suite. And in Styles, two and three bedroom apartments are the most common um, and they're definitely um, accessible. Okay, thank you. Um, Sophie has a great question. Um, so with this, this class that we have currently, being our largest uh, freshman class here at Drexel, um, she says, in the past I've heard about an issue where there were so many freshmen that upperclassmen had to, had to find alternate accommodations. Will something like that uh, be a problem for upcoming sophomores this coming year? And so I think both, both the University of Housing and ACC have, have uh, responses to that, as well as what things we're changing to try to make sure that we can accommodate all our students this coming year. Yeah, that's a really great question, Stacy. And 
Sophie. Sophie, my apologies. I'm yeah. <laughs> Stacey. She was looking at Stacey talking to Sophie. <laughs> that's what it is. You both have such wonderful names. Um, so that's definitely um, something that we're very cognizant about. Um, and we are actually actively renovating one of our halls um, that we hope to open this fall called Calhoun Hall. And that's going to um, give us a much larger option for our first year students and so that we'll be able to continue to secure Canaris and styles for our upper class students. So we are on track to open for fall um, this this hall. I'm knocking on every article of, of wood that's in front of me right now and so we don't anticipate having the same issue in university housing and we hope to be able to accommodate all of our rising sophomores and upper class students who wish to live with us. Yeah, and then with the uh, ACC, so you heard me mention a little bit earlier that we had a couple differences from last year. So we did have sophomore floor plans last year that were specific uh, to rising sophomores. Um, this year, of course, with the uh, higher class size and everything, all floor plans are open. So we have plenty of options for you um, across the three different communities. So shouldn't be an issue at all getting this space. And alternate seating charges. Yes, and uh, electronic leasing this year. So. Um, again, that'll uh, come to the, the uh, email address the student has on file with us, uh, given with the application process. And uh, once we start that leasing process, they'll get the lease to their email so they can, uh, again, sign from home, you know, whatever the case might be. They don't have to physically be in our office. Uh, so several, several of you have mentioned um, where, where is the financial information available, um, even though we've done the, the side by side overview. Um, I'll let them respond, but if you see there's many different options for each building and that would vary in almost to possibly 15 different types of price points. Um, and so looking at rates um, from our housing rates from this past year um, is a good way to start with that as well as I'll let ACC answer theirs. Yeah, yeah for uh, the pricing and everything again, you know, uh, going to our websites or go coming to the office directly, uh, calling the office uh, with what you're interested in in those floor plans at the different communities. Um, just because again, we have, you know, a wide variety of different price points there. Um, and then, you know, real quick too, in terms of financial aid, you know, we highly recommend that uh, you or the student checks in with their uh, financial aid office and, you know, confirms the amount and kind of uh, does that due diligence to make sure whatever the award is uh, will cover their housing and everything with American Campus. Um, typically how it works with students is if it's not on campus, if they're with us, um, they'll receive their financial aid for tuition and then whatever's left over for housing will come either direct deposit or to a check to the student or the uh, parent. Um, do you have information on when the ACC lease would start? Stacey. Yes, um, it will start on September 21st, um, 2019, and then that will go through September 7th, I believe, of 2020. And that follows, again, the academic calendar. Yes. So um, that follows when classes will start. So they, uh, ACC and University Housing will open up uh, their fall quarter lease, um, typically the weekend prior to classes starting, so your student can come and check in. However, if they have a co-op that starts earlier, we're not always able to accommodate an early arrival. So if your student has a fall co-op, I strongly encourage you to seek alternate housing because it's not always possible for them to move into their fall assignment early because their students finishing up their summer quarter in, in both of those and all of these properties. Um, can, can you talk a little bit about what move-in would look like for um what move-in assistance would be available for students as well as, I guess, for both locations? Because um, I know that would differ from how move-in look like for them as first-year students, for sure. Yeah, so with American Campus, we, uh, we uh, partner with a third-party vendor uh, called USS. Um, they're on hand for move-in day, and essentially how it'll work is uh, we schedule times at all the communities based on the floor that the student is living on. Um, we work with uh, USS to provide this information, send out those times and the schedule, uh, you know, kind of based on the, uh, the demand and the velocity coming in the building at that certain time frame. Um, how to work is uh, we have offloading lanes uh, by the buildings. So uh, you'll come with your vehicle. Uh, USS will offload your vehicle into a bin. Um, you'll have a dashboard piece with the unit number on there. It goes with the belongings and then we take it directly into the apartment. Uh, while you're going through the check-in process, picking up keys, um, finalizing any last minute paperwork, whatever the case might be. And then that way, once all that process is done, you go to the apartment and uh, your belongings are there ready to go uh, inside the apartment.
for university housing, um, it looks a little bit different. We will have a time frame for students to move in and we will provide carts for students to assist uh, to unload, but it's not going to look like that first year experience that your students had and that ACC is providing, although honestly things will change from year to year. So I, I can't promise what's going to happen this upcoming year, but this past year we've had carts available at all of our properties for students to utilize to unload and they're they're pretty big and so that's really helpful to make as few trips as possible. Um, several of you have asked for the website for ACC. Um, so I, I, so I searched back to this side by side. Um, so there at the bottom it says phillystudentliving.com um, which will link to um, any of the three properties that they have. Also, we do link directly on the housing website um, for Drexel University's housing website um, to those ACC properties. And so we're trying to share and cross collaborate with our campus partners as much as possible. Um, we're starting to wrap up on some questions. Could you talk about are the ACC properties 12 month leases always? Are they always 12 month leases? Yes, yeah, so all of the leases will be 12 months. Um, if you are going on a co-op or study abroad um, and you need your lease revised for when you're not going to be here, you would just submit that proof um, to the leasing office and then we would revise your lease based on um, your co-op or study abroad schedule. Um, but the initial lease that you would sign would be for 12 installments and then um, once you do solidify that co-op or study abroad, um, then we would work with you to revise your lease. Okay, it seems like we are sort of coming to a close. Um, I did see one scroll by that uh, had relevance to me and somebody had asked about um, styles being an option for nursing and health profession students. I'd just like to clarify that that is due to location. I do have students in our law school and plenty of programs that are on the University City campus who equally find um, Stiles to be a great location to live. I would also say that I live in the property so you get an excellent neighbor as well. Um, <laughs> just throwing it out there. Um, and so uh, if you have somebody in computer science and engineering, which was one of the questions that was there, um, you do get the opportunity. Uh, the university shuttle runs every 15 minutes from those um, as well uh, from the Center City campus to the University City campus and so there's uh, ease of transport to get to and from classes um, that as needed so just a quick plug for my home I just thought I'd add that in there um, so we do appreciate everybody taking time with us this evening to have um, these conversations and your questions were really great. Um, we understand that this is just the beginning um, and that there is going to be a lot more exploration that you and your student are going to do on this process before January rolls around. Um, hopefully you'll take some steps forward with ACC and filling out those applications early to really streamline that lease signing process. Um, and hopefully you'll keep your eye on the housing application process and exploring Canaris and Styles. Did I misspeak on that? No? no. Okay. Good. Okay, great. Good. I'm um, doing a good job. Here I go. Um and so just as a reminder, um, if you want to have any questions, if you have any questions for um, university housing, um, housing at drexel.edu, you can submit those via email and we have our diligent staff uh, responding to those as quickly as possible. So any questions that you may have, please feel free to reach out to the housing, university housing office. Um, you can also explore the Drexel website at drexel.edu backslash housing. Um, and for our ACC affiliate housing, you'll go to phillystudentliving.com, as well as reaching out to any of their leasing offices. Remember, there's a different leasing office for each of their properties as well, so you can reach out to the specific facility that you're looking to explore, um, as well as stopping by their office and or reaching out via their website and exploring the information there. Um, again, if we do appreciate you taking your time this evening, we apologize that you were not able to see our lovely faces and my power jacket. Um, however, we do hope that this was helpful in beginning this exploration for getting your students set up for success for this next academic year. Again, if you have any questions, we'd be happy to be helpful for you. Um, and I think we're going... Um, I will add what? that Sasha's got something. This presentation will be available on our website um, in a couple days to a couple weeks, depending on our technical expertise here. Uh, but it will be available for you to review if you um, wanted to hear our voices again. Um, My dulcet and, tones. And, and uh, yep, and watch this presentation as well. Yes. So thank you again, and we hope you have a great evening. And thank you again for spending time with us. Signing off. Good night. Thanks. Thanks.